ET, recently the Anxiety Disorder Society of Manitoba, launched a series of videos looking at childhood anxiety. And with a look at some of the issues that your kids may be facing, we've got Dr. Michelle Warren. Uh, so Dr. Warren, let's start with anxiety. How would you sure. define that? Well, it's fear that's out of proportion with the actual threat that a situation presents. Okay. And also um, a repeated pattern of avoidance. So avoiding the thing that you're afraid of, that's what gets in the way. Okay, so when it stops them from doing what they should normally Absolutely. be enjoying. How can I tell as a parent when the child is uh, normally anxious versus having something that needs to be addressed? Okay, so whether or not a child could use some extra assistance tends to uh, be based on a pattern that's coming up over and over again in that child's life okay. where they're in different settings and they're avoiding doing things or they're having difficulty with something like a fear of the dark uh, at bedtime but also in the evening not wanting to be in the basement alone and it happens again and again and again and you also have a sense that maybe their peers the average child their age can handle that but again most importantly it's getting in the way it's stopping them from doing something that they even want to do sometimes like go to a sleepover sure let's talk warning signs what can i yeah. look for when it comes to recognizing these issues in my child well, I think it's really important for parents to be aware that children may not say, this is what I'm afraid of. Right. Instead, you may see them avoiding situations, but also complaining of things like stomach aches and headaches. That's more common in children than adults. Adults are better at saying, this is what I've been thinking about all night while I couldn't sleep. Okay. Yeah. So when a kid says I'm, they're sick every Monday or they're sick every day before gym class, mm -hmm. then that's a sign that there's something to do. What can I do with my child? How can I help them? Well, thanks for asking. That's my favorite <laughs> question. That's what, well, that's and that's what you do. Yes. So we really appreciate when parents get on board and act as children's coaches at home. So, you know, both stepping back and taking a look at you, how you respond to your child's avoidance behavior. Do you run in and rescue them? One time when my daughter was getting used to swimming lessons, and she's now a great swimmer, but when she was just three years old, I actually ran into a swimming pool with jeans on to rescue her when she looked upset. Also, looking even, at even though she was in a lesson with, with the lifeguard. Yes, and even though I'm a child psychologist. <laughs> and the other issue is that we need to look at ourselves. You know, if we are a revved up person, if we walk fast, talk fast, if we avoid situations that cause us stress, if we get a phone call from an unknown phone number on the call display and we say, oh, I don't know who that is, don't answer it. By accident, we're inadvertently kind of uh, modeling avoidance behavior ourselves. So do we often find that uh, when the child has an issue, mom and dad has an issue and vice versa? Well, sometimes it runs in families, very much so, yes, our apples fall off us trees, but um, sometimes parents uh, don't uh, identify with what their child's struggling with, and they're more likely to miss it in those cases. Okay. But moms and dads, usually one or the other, if they're biological parents of a child, may have some features of anxiety themselves if they bring their child forward for some assistance. And it doesn't take much help coming and talking to a therapist for some tips mm -hmm. or even looking up information through your website website which will link folks to the Adam website is yep. that correct? Breakfastelevision.ca has got all the links. It's amazing how just changing your response ever so slightly as a parent to when your child looks fearful can really change the developmental course of how things go. And, and is that what we would do in a session with uh, you and a patient? We're just talking about the issue and talking about those fears and, and how we think about them? Yeah and really trying to catch the words that go through the mind because it's what we say to ourselves. For example today when I was feeling a bit nervous I said to myself well, honestly here? Just a little. I, I looked in the mirror and I said, at least I'm not running for mayor. That would be more stressful. And then I felt my anxiety come down. And I think that's important. Uh, teens and adults can, with coaching directly from a therapist, can catch their negative thoughts. Okay. It's the negative uh, evaluation or fear about what's happening next that makes us feel the uh, stress in our bodies and the emotion of anxiety. So um, that's great, but children, uh, I find, do better when parents become aware of their behaviors that look fearful and just model brave behavior, reinforce it with things like a positive attention and rewards like because young kids can't say what they're worried about. Right, and like all things with our child's health, we take an important role in it. Absolutely. And we've got to do it with our mental health as well. If you want some of those links for Adam, you'll find them on breakfasttelevision.ca. Going to take a break. There's plenty still to come today on BT.